And it's a great honor to be here and to, to uh, be moderating this panel. It, it's very special to, to Hawaii in particular. You know, I, I think you all know the United States and Japan have a very special relationship. Uh, in my mind, it's one that continually triumphs over uh, occasional adversity and in a very unique way shows what two nations can do to work together in mutual interest and respect. Uh, each, nations, each of these nations also have a common desire, and some of that was discussed by the uh, last panel, to find a different way through to the energy picture, um, to both find a, a better way to live with, with our planet, but also find a way to be less dependent on the uh, formerly inexpensive forms of fossil fuel uh, that uh, we used to and still do use far too much of. Both nations, ironically, have decided to look to their islands uh, and to look to their islands as a laboratory for seeing how we can figure out how to use uh, less energy or different forms of energy and still maintain a modern lifestyle and robust economies. Of course, for us in Hawaii and for Okinawa, uh, this is not a, a difficult uh, a path at all. Uh, there are many of the leading uh, uh, citizens of Hawaii who trace their lineage to Okinawa. And Okinawans in Hawaii uh, are, are uh, prominent in their leadership in economic and political fields. It would be safe to say the uh, Hawaii and Okinawa know each other very, very well. Uh, it's also true, as Professor Tsutsumi pointed out, that both Okinawa and Hawaii have this major problem with dependence. Uh, we are dependent on the outside world for virtually everything. And we both are not real happy about it. Uh, we both are proud peoples who would like to be far more self-reliant in terms of the basic commodities that form our life than we are today. So we both have a passion for changing the situation we find ourselves in. So uh, as two island peoples, we are beginning a journey together. Uh, we have five panelists who are going to help us with this today. The first presenter, uh, Yasushi Akahoshi, uh, is with METI. Uh, the director of the Americas Division in the Trade Policy Bureau. And he's going to begin by giving us the overall context of this work between the United States uh, and Japan. Thank you, very, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon and aloha. Uh, before getting started, uh, I would like to touch upon uh, one topic. Uh, Governor Yuzaki referred to his experience uh, in America's division uh, when he was in METI. And at that time, uh, I suppose that uh, he was fully occupied uh, by trade uh, friction kind of issues. Uh, but uh, uh, now, uh, the assignment of my America's division uh, is to rather build up uh, positive uh, agendas uh, between two countries, and, uh, uh, which uh, I describe from now on. <coughs> so that, uh, I would say, uh, that means, uh, this change means uh, the maturity and the new, new opportunity of two uh, countries. So, well, uh, I'd like to talk about three issues today, uh, highlighting, highlighting recent development. First of all, I'd like to describe Japan-U.S. clean energy cooperation as a whole, which includes uh, the Hawaii-Okinawa project as the main issues. <coughs> then, I'd like to touch upon two other issues. One is the relevance to APEC, uh, which is one of the themes of the morning session. And another is Japan-U.S. innovation and entrepreneurship, uh, which is also relating to clean energy as well as previous session. <coughs> Let me begin the part one by describing what is the motivation of thinking uh, behind in Japan, U.S. Korean energy cooperation. First of all, both countries had a new administration in the last year. New presidency in the United States and Democratic Party of Japan. <coughs> and both administrations have declared similar clean energy rating policies. In Japan, we attach great importance to the concept of green innovations, while the United States has been eager to increase investment in green technologies, which leads to enhanced employment. <coughs> Secondly, <coughs> each side has its own strengths, uh, but I will skip uh, this part since Onodera-san kindly uh, explained uh, on my behalf in previous sessions. Uh, <coughs> In this regard, uh, the combination of these two would bring about much benefit, not only to us, but also to all over the world. Smart grid and electric vehicles are the good examples. 
Such tangible cooperation would be an integrated, integrated solution to energy security and climate change. On the other hand, we can deepen our bilateral partnership as a whole by this cooperation. <clears throat> Based on such background, both government officials in charge had been exploring the possibility of tangible cooperation. And in this regard, it was quite timely that then Prime Minister Hatoyama and President Obama met in November 2009 during the present trip to Asia. The two leaders agreed to launch the Bilateral Clean Energy Technologies Cooperation. At the same time, our Ministry and Department of Energy announced publicly the Clean Energy Technology Action Plan between two countries. <clears throat> two sides ident identified the various areas for cooperation, such as uh, cooperation between national labs, carbon capture and storage, smart grid, electric vehicles, and so on and so forth. And among others, <coughs> two leaders agreed on the implementation of Hawaii-Okinawa cooperation. <coughs> Let's look at what they agreed for Hawaii-Okinawa in their agreement. It was decided to establish a task force to explore the activities relating to clean energies, such as microgrid, so that both islands become energy independent. Various activities are ongoing for each item in Japan-US clean energy cooperation as a whole. Well, now I'd like to look at detail of Hawaii-Okinawa cooperation. <clears throat> what motivation is behind this cooperation? Let me describe from Japanese perspective. We recognize two islands share many similarities, such as geographical conditions, climate conditions, and energy structure. <clears throat> Both islands also pursue a proactive approach to renewable energies. Uh, two maps on uh, the right-hand side show the existing endeavor to introduce renewable energy in both islands. <coughs> Therefore, <coughs> we believe that uh, we can expect a maximum synergy by sharing best practices of two islands. Moreover, we can also expect that by installing renewable energies and promoting energy efficiency, this cooperation would be developed as a showcase for the world. This cooperation between itself would also be a most visible partnership which Japan and the United States can explore. And once we can accomplish some result, we will be able to show it as a tangible result of this partnership to the world. <coughs> Thus, we reach agreement on conducting Hawaii-Okinawa joint cooperation. The signing ceremony of Memorandum of Cooperation took place in the middle of June in Tokyo with participation of Governor Ringo, Governor of Okinawa, Nakaima-san, and uh, our former minister, Naoshima, and the U.S. ambassador to Japan, Mr. John Roos, who represent the uh, U.S. Department of Energy. This ceremony drew a lot of attention of media uh, of both countries. <coughs> I'd like to describe the elements of the memorandum of cooperation very briefly. <coughs> as for the scope of cooperation, we defined it as renewable energies, energy efficiency, energy policies, and smart grid and, and, and or smart city. <clears throat> now forms of cooperative activities. Both sides exchange information regarding policy each other and investigate the possible joint research. The expert mission as initial activities was realized in August. <clears throat> as a next step, we will find good demonstration project projects suitable for both islands. As for exchange of officials and academia, we had the second session of people-to-people -people exchange in this morning uh, where various ideas are pursued. <coughs> As mentioned earlier, uh, the expert mission to Okinawa and Hawaii was conducted in August in order to identify areas of cooperation and joint projects. The mission is composed of Department of Energy, uh, our ministries, uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, State of Hawaii, Okinawa Prefecture, and relevant research institutes. <coughs> the mission visited various places to realize the aim of memorandum of cooperation. <coughs> Based on the result of this mission, second task force meeting of Hawaii-Okinawa cooperation was held on September 3rd. In the task force meetings, it was, it was decided to work together mainly in four areas, energy efficiency, smart grid, 
renewable energies, people-to-people -people exchange. And as you can see in this right, uh, uh, in this right, uh, various activities has been conducted so far. <clears throat> Among others, regarding smart grid, a uh, tour for scoping the actual project was sent to Hawaii last month, and now we are considering the possibility of a joint demonstration project in Hawaii, which we will be able to appeal to the APEC leaders next year. Besides smart grid, uh, there will be many possible areas of cooperation. <clears throat> As I mentioned earlier, uh, the purpose, uh, purpose is to have a showcase of the new energy model, and we do hope that this will lead uh, to the worldwide innovation. <clears throat> now I come back to the Japan-US Green Energy Cooperation as a whole. <clears throat> On the occasion of Yokohama APEC leaders' meetings held in last month, Prime Minister Khan and President Obama met and launched new two initiative, initiatives related to clean energies on the basis of the ongoing cooperation. <clears throat> First one is the Energy Smart Communities Initiatives, and second one is the U.S.-Japan Clean Energy Dialogue. <clears throat> Five days after the leaders' meetings, bilateral energy ministerial meetings was held, and the content of the new initiatives was materialized. Let me briefly talk about these initiatives. In the Energy Smart Community Initiatives, four concepts are presented, namely smart power grids, smart buildings, smart transport, uh, smart jobs, and consumers. Two leaders agreed to take on initiatives to spread those concepts among APEC economies. When you compare these, compa these concepts uh, in previous slides, you you, in previous slide, you will notice that this initiative was formulated based on the model of the Hawaii-Okinawa cooperation. In the U.S.-Japan Clean Energy Dialogue, possible cooperation will be explored in the fields such as transformative technologies, electric vehicles, and rare earths. <clears throat> Let me quickly touch upon other two issues. First is APEC. As you know, 18th APEC Economic Leaders Meetings was successfully held in Yokohama last month. Among others, leaders agreed on uh, number three uh, uh, in la right hand side uh, APEC Leaders uh, Growth Strategy. In the growth strategy, sustainable growth or green growth is one of the most important elements in that process. That is to say, Shift to green economy. <clears throat> the basic idea includes energy efficiency and low carbon energy and improving access to environmental goods and services. <clears throat> One tangible plan is APEC low carbon model project, uh, which I will describe, describe uh, in next slide. <clears throat> next year, APEC will be hosted by the United States and the leaders meeting will be held in this town. In the next year's process, various ideas born in this year's process are supposed to be materialized more in depth. <clears throat> I'd like to introduce the APEC Low Carbon Model Project here as one example of relevance, uh, relevance to our bilateral cooperation. Its basic concept is to introduce APEC's low carbon technologies such as smart grid or energy apex, uh, sorry, such as smart grid or energy management in the process of planning, developing, and operating in town building. Eventually, this project would have a synergy with Hawaii Okinawa Joint Project. <coughs> now, and my last topic uh, is the U.S.-Japan cooperation to promote innovations, entrepreneurship, and job creations. Uh, this is somehow related to the previous session. My ministry and the U.S. Department of State launched this cooperation and first meeting was held in last May in Tokyo. We share the common views that we can take advantage of technologies and various resources in both countries once we can have the good business alliances. To this end, <coughs> we agreed on the cooperations which motivate innovations and entrepreneurship in two countries which bring about much opportunities of, employ of employment in both sides. What I like to emphasize here is that the clean energy relating business is considered to be the most promising area for the cooperation between the two countries. 
Second dialogue will be held in next February, uh, or actually we are planning to hold uh, in next February, focusing on clean technologies uh, in Silicon Valley. <coughs> so this is the end of my presentation. <coughs> I have described the three cooperation initiatives between Japan and the United States, all of which uh, lead to the promotion of clean energies and can contribute to the Hawaii Okinawa project. We hope that these endeavors will work in synergies and that the Hawaii Okina project will provide cutting edge model for the rest of the world. Thank you very much for your attention. Mahalo. Our next speaker is uh, Steve Lindenberg. He is a senior advisor for renewable energy with the U.S. Department of Energy and he'll be giving a, an overview from the federal standpoint, uh, U.S. government standpoint on this initiative. Steve. Thanks very much, Robbie. Aloha. Uh, you're looking at the most fortunate employee of the Department of Energy. <laughs> I get up every day. I work on fascinating, challenging problems with a wonderful team of folks from across the state of Hawaii, and I get to live here. Yeah. And I must thank you all. Mahalo. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to try and describe a bit today what the Department of Energy is doing in Hawaii. Why are we here and what are we trying to accomplish in working as a partner with the state and with the constituents of the state of Hawaii to try to change their energy future. So I've worked for about 30 years in the electric utility industry, almost all of that in fossil energy generation and environmental affairs. And about five years ago, I came to the Department of Energy to work on renewable energy because I've been watching the technology develop since the 1960s. Um, when we saw, and actually my predecessor, a gentleman named Bill Parks, was here working with the State Energy Office, when he and others saw that there were the challenges uh, pretty much set upon every island in the world, but perhaps manifest here in Hawaii, of the unfortunate circumstance of petroleum being the basis of the energy structure, and thought about that into the future, it was clear that something needed to be done. That's been aware or a, a, an awareness of the Hawaiians for 30 years. But we decided in 2008 to try and do something significant about that. And in cooperation with the state, we signed a memorandum of understanding between the Department of Energy and the uh, state of Hawaii. The Department of Energy is about 10,000 employees and about 150,000 contract scientists and engineers working at national laboratories. About three to 5,000 of those people work on energy efficiency and renewable energy, and I'm their representative. My role here is to try to detect as best I can the needs of the state. I get great help from Maria, her staff, and many other people about what it is that we can do to help to clarify the problems that they're trying to deal with. I operate under sort of a philosophy that we ought to live in a sustainable world. And to do that, we need to kind of integrate three different things, technology, policy, and finance. In technology, we have to use wisdom and critical thinking to try to determine which technologies to put into place. Regarding policy, we need to have intelligent policy that is consistent, predictable, and understandable for people to make decisions both in their own lives as well as business investments. And in finance, we need to worry about trying to match the financial challenges against the community's commitment to participate. All of those are seen here in wonderful uh, agreement. Uh, the state is open to new technology. Policies have been put in place in the last few years since the initiation of the Clean Energy Initiative. And the community has really demonstrated a commitment, perhaps mostly through its legislative actions, but one would presume that those do in fact represent the needs of the 
community. So what we've been doing is trying to help to bring knowledge from our various researchers to the state to help them to make good decisions. And that's everyone in the state, whether it be Robbie and his team over at uh, Hawaiian Electric, uh, folks at the gas company, at the bus, at the cities and counties, uh, across almost every sector of what we can consider the energy industry. Uh, we have been working on trying to establish new sets of policies that make sense through the normal legislative and regulatory process. And we've begun, though I think we haven't made as much progress as we'd like to in the areas of finance and engaging the financial community. It's a very challenging proposition. And most of us come from science and engineering backgrounds and are a little confused by some of that process. But we do have partners who understand and can help us. In regards to working with the uh, Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative, uh, we are trying to understand the many options. And it is really quite gratifying to see that the state has many options. It's a rich solar energy resource. There's actually a fair amount of energy efficiency yet to be taken into account and to be applied into the systems here in either buildings or uh, businesses, residential, or transportation. Uh, we've got opportunities for wind energy and geothermal, and we're working on ocean technologies. So there's this grand array of opportunities, and what we need to do is judicious decision-making to try and set a future course as best we can. It will change because the opportunities will change. New technologies will emerge. Better approaches will occur. And that's why we've talked about a 20-year commitment from now until 2030 to try and get to 70% clean energy. Um, we hope that we will be wise enough to be able to see the future at least in four or five year periods and to be able to make decisions and commitments over that kind of structure. Uh, we have been doing this kind of capacity building in other kinds of settings. Uh, on the mainland, we've had activities where we have helped small communities that were destroyed by tornadoes in Greensburg, Kansas to rebuild itself entirely to the greenest city in the world. For that small little town of 1,500 people, it has, last time I counted, 21 lead gold or higher buildings in that city, including residences and businesses. It is 100% renewable, operating off of solar and wind, and it's a demonstration of what can be done. It's fairly small. That success gave us some bold enthusiasm to come to Hawaii and try it here. But we also have taken that effort to places like, uh, oh, communities like Miramar Marine Base in Southern California, where we're trying to do the same thing, and other locations, uh, New Orleans, Louisiana, and the like. I think we've gotten some success. We've made some very good progress here. And in the process, we've learned a great deal that we can transfer to other places. We've begun that in the US Virgin Islands under a prototype that is very much following the Hawaii model and trying to accomplish the same sort of effort. Their goal is to be 60% clean energy by 2025 and we have a team of people working there. Uh, we have signed our agreement with Okinawa. And in that case, we've got a great opportunity because they already have started their process of transformation of energy, and we can learn from each other. So though we think we understand some aspects of this problem, they do as well. And we are going to learn from each other, and we are going to gain the insights of each other's experience and bring it to our island communities, Hawaii and Okinawa, and hopefully then transform it to bring it to other island communities. I'm working with the U.S. Department of Interior, 
Defense, Agriculture, U.S. EPA, and um, trying to make the same sorts of contributions to the Pacific Island territories. Now that we've gotten the U.S. Virgin Islands, one of our U.S. territories in the Caribbean begun, and other folks back at the Department of Energy and at some of our national labs are beginning a similar process with the territory of Puerto Rico. And so from all of these, we're going to learn and we're going to build a knowledge base, a new insight, and I think actually a new business practice. Much as people were not engineers and not architects once upon a time, today we don't have very many people in the world that can look at 175 renewable and energy efficiency opportunities and make a plan out of them to transform a community, whether it be here or New York City, from fossil energy to sustainable renewable energy. And we have a wonderful 20-year opportunity ahead of us, and I hope to be able to make my contribution and continue to do that into the future. Thank you. Our third speaker is Shinichi Hosono, Director of the Second North American Division of North American Affairs Bureau of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Um, he's going to provide more context, particularly to the uh, Okinawa-Hawaii portion uh, from the agreement between the United States and Japan. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Alm, and uh, uh, I would like to express my sincere appreciation for it to the uh, U.S. Japan Council as well as Japan American Society of Hawaii to host such a wonderful symposium, and I'm honored to be part of it. Um, as uh, today, as uh, Mr. Akahoshi, my colleague Akahoshi-san, has already explained in detail about the uh, the contents of what we are doing, Japan and the United States doing in terms of uh, you know, clean energy cooperation as well as Okinawa Hawaii energy collaborations. So uh, in my presentations, I would like to see this Okinawa Hawaii energy collaborations from the broader perspective of Japan-US economic relations or Japan-US relations as in general, which I hope uh, to suit the overall theme of this symposium. So th today I'd like to briefly touch upon four things uh, first, uh, I'd like to go over the, uh, the current state of Japan-U.S. economic relations. And secondly, uh, I'll be very brief in touching upon uh, what we are doing in terms of clean energy in the context of uh, Japan-U.S. bilateral context as well as APEC context. Uh, and thirdly, I would like to explain uh, the Japanese policies with regard to the promotion of green innovations so, as providing uh, the uh, solid foundations for our cooperation in, uh, in this field for the future. And lastly, I would like to state my you know, personal observations uh, that what this Okinawa-Hawaii collabor energy collaborations uh, represents or signifies uh, from the viewpoint of Japan-U.S. economic or uh, Japan-U.S. relations in general. Again, uh, the state of the Japan-U.S. economic relations, as uh, uh, Kaho san as well as Governor Yuzaki said, that uh, this, the current uh, Japan-U.S. economic relationship is uh, characterized uh, with, is, is very good, and if you use the word, uh, one word to characterize Japan-U.S. economic relations, I think the cooperation would be the word. And as uh, Mr. Uemoto, Director General of Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Uemoto said this in, uh, in this morning sessions, that the economic promoting of uh, Japan-U.S. economic relationship is one of the three pillars, as, you know, in that, together with uh, uh, security and human people-to-people -people exchange to deepen our alliances. And as uh, was said, that uh, in the time of uh, you know Governor Yuzaki's time in Miti. Uh, our bilateral relation used to be uh, characterized with the word uh, frictions, but now, as I said, that the, uh, today Japan-U.S. economic relations is best characterized by the word cooperation, by which I mean U.S. and Japan are cooperating to jointly address the common challenges and the common opportunities, not only in the bilateral context, but also in regional as well as global context. There are, of course, you know, uh, various uh, reasons, uh, and, uh, well, in, in uh, 
nutshell, uh, this reflects the deepening of interdependence and integration between two economies. In other words, the maturing of our economic relationship. And I should also have also add that the, the very innovation, which were very uh, vigorously discussed in the previous sessions, uh, expanded uh, the uh, frontier of uh, cooperation in the economic field for the two countries. And uh, so, as a result, Japan and the United States is uh, cooperating in almost all the pl uh, plurilateral, regional, global uh, economic forums. And uh, we welcome also the participation of the U.S., recent participation of the U.S. in the EAS, and that, you know, adds another uh, important economic forum to the list. And also, our cooperation covers many wide-ranging economic areas, uh, macroeconomy, trade, climate change, foreign aid, and intellectual property pr protections, which was also vigorously uh, mentioned in the preceding sessions. And uh, in the last intellectual property protections, Japan and the United States were uh, taking a very good initiative in uh, finalizing the negotiations on the you know, multilateral treaty called Anti-Counterfeiting Trade Agreement. And uh, it is in this uh, third category of climate change and, uh, which where the Japan-U.S. energy corporations and Okinawa-Hawaii uh, energy corporations are uh, undertaking. Next, please. And uh, with regard to the, uh, our, uh, the J corporations in Japanese economic uh, uh, energy corporations, clean energy corporations, I, of course, uh, Akawashi-san have uh, already explained it, so I wouldn't repeat that, uh, except that I would like to emphasize that uh, this collaborations and corporations has been promoted but with uh, the strong backing of our two leaders, between, uh, of our two countries, between the Prime Ministers and President of uh, both the Japan and the United States. And also, lastly, uh, in the uh, meeting in November in Yokohama, Prime Minister Khan, at the very bottom of the column, also expressed his hope in the meeting to cooperate on such issues as clean energy, innovation, and high-speed railway, including superconducting maglev and a stable supply of rare earth. I would just like to briefly mention about this uh, uh, high-speed railway and uh, maglev uh, uh, things that, uh, uh, as you know, that uh, uh, we have, Japan has a, a very good, uh, excellent uh, technology with regard to high-speed railway demonstrated by Shinkansen, and also we have the world-only world uh, technology of superconducting maglev, which is the magnetically uh, levita levitated uh, train systems. And uh, these uh, technologies are not only excellent, but safe, but as well as eco-friendly. So I believe that the, uh, promoting the partnership between our two countries in this uh, area, through introductions of Japanese technology of both uh, Shinkansen plat train or maglev trains, would uh, be desirable from the uh, viewpoint of promotion of Japan-U.S. cooperation. And, but at the same time, I believe, personally believe that it will contribute to the job creations and uh, environment policy of the United States as well. Again, uh, within the APEC, again, uh, I wouldn't go in detail of the contents, but uh, as Akawa-san said, the, the APEC, uh, in the APEC also did include the uh, cooperation in energy field led, uh, well, and, and who's, where the initiative are taken by our two countries. And uh, as someone uh, who is uh, involved in the uh, Japan-U.S. economic relations, I would just like to echo the previous panels that the, uh, the very fact that the Japan and United States uh, uh, hosting uh, 2010 and 2011 APEC is uh, a literary golden opportunity. And uh, as was also explained in the previous, in the morning sessions, Japan and the United States have been closely, had been closely cooperating uh, toward the success of Yokohama uh, APEC or APEC hosted in Japan. And Japanese government is of course ready, uh, prepared and ready to d resolve to cooperate as much as possible with the US government for the success of U.S. APEC. Okay. And the next 
please. In this slide, I'd like, uh, uh, allow me to uh, talk about a little bit of personal anecdotal uh, stories about engaging Okinawa Hawaii promotion, uh, corporations. Uh, the cooperation between Okinawa Hawaii is not a new thing. Uh, it's a history, and uh, one is that uh, the Okinawa Hawaii Corporation was also started uh, uh, with the uh, launch of uh, the Japan US, so-called Japan News Common Agenda for Cooperation Global Perspective in 1993. Uh, under that Common Agenda, Okinawa Hawaii Corporation was uh, sort of promoted, and I also my, myself was involved in uh, hosting or arranging the symposium or seminar. Uh, uh, taking place in Okinawa uh, under this uh, umbrella. So I'm very personally very happy that uh, on two accounts with regard to the Okinawa Hawaii Clean Energy Collaborations. First, that Okinawa Hawaii collab Cooperation or Collaboration has been reinvigorated. And secondly, this cooperation is taking place in such a very important area as clean energy or clean technologies. <laughs> And also, in the second part, I, let me just briefly uh, talk about the uh, relations of, uh, between the Gaim Ministry of Foreign Affairs and PICTA, Pacific uh, International Center for High Technology Research, which is also, together with the University of Hawaii, is actively involved in this uh, Hawaii-Okinawa collaboration. Uh, PICTA was, of course, uh, uh, is a well-respected organization, and from between 1987 to 2006, the Ministry of Finance has, uh, well, gave, uh, extended the financial contributions to the cooperation to PICTA to uh, promote energy projects and technological development, uh, including OTEC uh, projects. But the 2001, uh, because of the budgetary constraints, we had to cut, first cut uh, the amount of our financial cooperation. And I happened to be the one who had to inform the PICTA of that very bad news. <laughs> So I flew to Hawaii, visited the office of PICTA, and told uh, them the very bad news. But they were very kind, warm, uh, uh, you know, uh, accepted it with the, such graciousness. So I was really moved. But after that, uh, again, unfortunately, because of the budget constraints, we had to stop all the financial contribution in 2006. But the members, all the members of PICTA have been very kind to me even today, to this day as well, which I also appreciate very, very much. Okay, let me just finish by, you know, anecdotal or personal things. And uh, please, next, go into the next things. What we are going to the next generation. I couldn't find any sort of updated data, so, but I just want to show that the, undoubtedly Japan and uh, uh, United States uh, are the leading, uh, you know, players in uh, developing the, uh, our, a new sort of energy and clean energy technologies and so we have a responsibility to push uh, for the development of such clean energy uh, clean energy technology through our cooperations and let me just briefly uh, explain that the uh, Japanese uh, government's sort of green innovation policy so that uh, to tell you that, uh, that we do have a sort of policy uh, foundations uh, to uh, continue our cooperation in clean energy in the future. Uh, June 18th this year, Japanese government announced a new uh, growth strategy uh, which designated seven strategic areas uh, which includes uh, the green innovations. And of course this uh, uh, green innovation project uh, uh, covers wide-ranging programs but I just highlighted some of the items which are, are uh, being also addressed uh, within the context of Hawaii-Okinawa Clean Energy Collaboration. And I, I also know, I'm well aware that the, uh, and as was explained by uh, my previous uh, government, Mr. Lindenberg, that the uh, U.S. government as well as, uh, you know, Hawaii is committed to the green innovation as well. So we think that uh, we have a very good, solid found policy foundations for us uh, to uh, promote green innovations and green energy corporations in the future. Next, please. Lastly, based upon what I have just said, I would like to personally um, share with you uh, my thought with regard to what this Okinawa Hawaii Energy Collaborations 
represents or signifies in terms of Japanese corporations. Of course, this Okinawa Hawaii Energy collaboration in itself is a very important endeavor, but uh, I also think that uh, this uh, represents or signifies four points. First, it represents solid Japan US economic ties of corporations. The second, Japan US joint efforts and cooperation to tackle the issue of climate change. Third, Japan US joint commitments to the Asia Pacific region. And fourth, Japan US uh, uh, our common resolve to realize our green future through innovations. Uh, next, please. Thank you very much. I'd like to finish uh, with my presentation with these pictures. These pictures, by the way, uh, were taken by the uh, Advanced Land Observing Satellite uh, launched by the Japan Aerospace uh, Exploration Agencies. Because of the scope of the monitor, it can cover only the biggest island. <laughs> that, but uh, we'd like to just show that not only the, the, they are beautiful island, but uh, also we introduced the, another sort of uh, sphere of uh, technology uh, space technology, which might be another sort of area for the Japanese cooperation in the future. Thank you very much. Our final two speakers will focus uh, much more on the actual work going on between Hawaii and, and Okinawa. Uh, first, Maria Tomei, who is the Renewable Energy Program Manager in the Strategic Energy Division of the State Department of uh, Business, Economic Development, and Tourism for the State of Hawaii. Maria? Aloha. Aloha. You guys want to stand up again, or are you okay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You get some, get some, get some energy going here. This is the energy panel. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. I'm going to um, cover many of the similar statements that have been made before. Um, and we look for what has not been covered. Basically, we are both remote islands, which we have already mentioned, and of course, we also have very similar climates and population, about 1.3 million. This slide hasn't been pre presented before, but it shows why we in Hawaii are so sincerely interested in this. There's a big section down there at the bottom, and that's half of the tonnage of what comes into the state is fuel every year. You know, you think we buy a lot of stuff and we ship in a lot of food and we ship in a lot of, well, heck, everything, your Christmas trees, you name it. But really, people don't realize the scope of our challenge and our opportunity. So the Clean Energy Initiative, which has been alluded to previously, was launched in 2008, and it even at that point mentioned the intent to share the information from this um, clean energy initiative, which includes the Department of Energy, with other communities. The clean energy initiative proposes to get 70% of our energy from clean sources by 2030. Now the reason we use the word clean energy was to encompass not just renewables, but also efficiency, because efficiency is extremely important. And so you can see how that um, that comes together there. And there are many, many areas in which to work. And the challenge is we don't know when we're going to have to accomplish all this because we don't know what global issues are going to arise. We don't know at what point the price of oil is going to spike up again or go up and stay. We don't know how much time we have. And so we need to work as quickly as we can. And in order to accomplish all this stuff, we need to collaborate with others, and Japan collaborating with us is extremely important, especially as I pointed out before, there are so many similarities between Hawaii and Okinawa that we can work on some of this, some aspects of these, and they've worked on some aspects of these, and by sharing the information, we can avoid duplicating the mistakes, and we can learn from the successes. So, of course, as has been presented previously, we've have a lot of um, high-level discussions and agreement on the big picture stuff and we went on study tour of Okinawa and then of course the uh, media was very interested when we went there they followed <coughs> followed us several times and the areas that we are discussing with them are the four that 
um, you see here, energy efficiency, renewables, energy storage, and smart grid, transportation energy. This is an aerial view of Honolulu. It's our vast reserve of energy efficiency. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, potential energy efficiency, exactly. Um, Itoman City Hall did some very interesting things in energy efficiency. Okinawa Institute of Science and Technology, extremely interesting building and design and um, things being demonstrated there. Net Zero Energy Buildings Workshop was held just in October in Okinawa, and so Hawaii traveled, several folks from Hawaii traveled there for that event. And there are many areas for collaboration on this energy efficiency, and so we will be working with them on from the high-level agreement and the understanding that we have many things that have been done in both places to actually get down to putting some projects into demonstration and sharing of the information, which it's a little harder to take pictures of information sharing, but it's <laughs> extremely important. So renewable energy, of course, we have many renewable resources potentially available. And when we went to Okinawa, we saw several examples. Um, and I would mention, for example, Miyakojima Solar. You know, they're in the path of quite a few severe storms. And so they've designed this to be stormproof. Well, maybe we don't have to go and, you know, design it from scratch to make ours storm resistant and so forth. So those are examples. And the wind turbines, you saw some injured wind turbines earlier. Um, they actually have a design where the wind turbine will be able to fold down. Now, Hawaii's not quite in the path of as many severe storms as Okinawa is, but many of these um, lessons learned and new technologies are extremely interesting to us. Ocean thermal energy conversion will be discussed uh, by the last speaker a little bit more. But the Ocean Energy Workshop happened in Okinawa in November, and Hawaii was represented there as well. We have deep sea water pipelines at Nelha and Kumijima, and many ideas for collaboration in this area of OTEC, because that's a huge untapped resource with a great deal of research potential. The third area of interest is a smart grid and energy storage. You haven't seen this slide before either because it shows cable between the islands. And I might mention, you know, we are talking about interconnecting our islands to be able to tap into our wind energy resources. Okinawa does have some islands that are already interconnected. The Okinawa Electric Power Company also has some technologies in use that we found very interesting. The Flywheel Okinawa Electric Power Company, Flywheel. The gas company had a fuel cell. There's um, large-scale battery storage at Miyako, connected to that solar farm I showed before. And on the smart grid side, there's going to be a project on Maui that's going to be integrated with the uh, other Department of Energy-supported work on Maui. And the electric utilities are working with the researchers um, on this. And it includes not just the the renewable piece, but all the intelligence and interconnection and standardization. Somebody mentioned standardization earlier. It's extremely important that these systems which are being developed by entrepreneurial companies or by large companies are able to be connected and to communicate with each other. So the Smart Grid planning meeting with Hawaiian Electric and Maui Electric Company was held here in Hawaii, and they started off on Oahu and went to Maui, and you notice they're not actually on the beach. I don't think we <laughs> let them anywhere near a beach. <laughs> There's a picture, they have a beautiful picture though, so that, that's a nice touch there. Um, but you know, we've got very intelligent, creative, articulate folks working on the solutions. Uh, and it's not just the big picture stuff, but it's those details that make all the difference in success. So the Smart Grid project um, is connect, interconnecting with, uh, we're going to be working with the U.S. funds of $15 million, and of course there's, there are a bunch of goals there that are the types of things that the utilities, not just in small island grids, are interested in, but they can be scaled up in an extremely important way for larger grids. The fourth area of interest, of course, is transportation energy. We have a huge use of transportation, um, petroleum for transportation fuel. In Hawaii, about a third of it 
is used for jet fuel. About a third is used for ground transportation. This is diesel, this is gasoline. And then the bottom third approximately is for power plants. There is work going on in Okinawa to produce ethanol from sugarcane, and there's a lot of research going on with universities in Okinawa and also in Hawaii and the Hawaii Agriculture Research Center. And going back to the history between Hawaii and Okinawa, there was a lot of cooperative research in the days of the sugar industry. And so that's another area where there was research on successful weight crops, you know, different varieties, how you grow them, how do you deal with the various <coughs> challenges in, in growing these crops. And that type of collaboration, I think, we'll be seeing again in the area of biofuels. So essentially, we have a lot of things that are being, being done in each of these, and we can feed our examples back and forth, and then if we do a demonstration in one place, it feeds over to the other side and vice versa, which helps everybody to go faster. And that works because we have the individuals who are committed to this actually working with their counterparts in people-to-people -people exchanges. It also is an interest of this to involve the greater community, the researchers, the, the students, and so forth, because if we're going to address our societal energy challenges, it takes more than um, just one segment. It's gonna take everybody, and so you can see that we're, we're developing um, a lot of projects to try to bring folks together at all levels on both sides. So that concludes my presentation, and thank you very much for your attention. And our final speaker is Chihiro Tominaga, Deputy Counselor in the Industrial Policy Division, Department of Tourism, Commerce, and Industry in the Okinawa Prefecture. Mr. Tominaga. Hi, Sai. Hi, Sai. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me to a symposium today. Uh, my name is Tominaga, and I joined the Industrial Policy Division as a Deputy Counselor in charge of energy issues in over Okinawa. And I'm a native to Okinawa. Uh, I would like to introduce uh, this cooperation from a local aspect. And th these are my topics. Uh, first, I would like to explain about the importance of this cooperation from Okinawa Sai. And then, about outlines of four work programs which are initiated to promote the cooperation. The last topic is what is going on in the work, work programs. I'm going to report about the OTEC workshop in Kumejima as an example. Okinawa Prefecture appreciates the Hawaii-Okinawa partnership on clean energy by three aspects. First, it strengthens the Hawaii-Okinawa partnership. Okinawa and Hawaii have a long history of friendship. Just after the furious battle of Okinawa ended, the Okinawan American citizens in Hawaii supported desperate Okinawan people by sending relief supplies. Okinawa Prefecture and the state of Hawaii have a sister state relationships. The tourism industry of Hawaii is a role model for Okinawa. For instance, uh, Kariushi Ware. This is uh, very popular in Okinawa. Uh, is indeed a sister of Aloha Shoot. Along with the history of relations with Hawaii, Okinawa Prefecture is delighted to accompany a new partnership in energy issue. Second, uh, it helps develop the Okinawa energy vision. In Okinawa, all of the energy resources such as petroleum and coal comes from outside of the island. To increase independence in energy resources and establish a low carbon society, the prefectural government announced the Okinawa energy vision this year. In the vision, for example, we aim to increase the amount of clean energy from 0.2% at present to 10% in 2030. Uh, it is 50 times more than the current level. In order to achieve numerical target on the vision, regulatory, research, business, and social innovation is needed. And we expect that the partnership with Hawaii, DOE, and METI will promote these innovations. Thirdly, the partnership will contribute not only to each island and nation, but also to the global benefit. 
The partnership focuses on clean and efficient energy development. The outcome of the future demonstration project on each island through the partnership will be transferable to the Asia-Pacific region. I think this is one of the reasons that the United States and Japanese government initiated the Hawaii-Okinawa partnership. Okinawa Prefectural Government released the 21st century vision this year. The first page of this vision describes that the Okinawa has a potential to foster mutual understanding and partnership between Japan and the Asia Pacific countries. Therefore, this partnership matches with the prefectural strategy. And we, Okinawa Prefecture, <coughs> are very proud to achieve the goal with Japan and the United States government and with the state of Hawaii. This is the significance of the Hawaii Okinawa Clean Energy Partnership for Okinawa. Under the Memorandum of Cooperation, the first technical mission was deployed in August, and four work programs have since been organized. These are the four programs, and many explanations about this, so I, I want to <laughs> skip this slide. Okay, and um, I'm going to focus on the uh, uh, topic of uh, OTEC. Uh, work group, this renewables. Okay. Uh, okay, to the next slide. Uh, from this slide, I would like to introduce the OTEC workshop in Kumejima. Kumejima Island is located at 40 miles west of Okinawa Island. The prefectural government, after the research mission to Naha on Hawaii Island, established Deep Sea Water Research Center in 2000 in order to develop technologies for deep sea water businesses in Okinawa. The center has two deep sea water pipelines with the capacity of providing 13,000 tons per day and surface water pipeline with the same capacity. The center develops aquaculture technologies, cooperate with entrepreneurs, supplies seawater to business park located behind the center. The deep sea water businesses have since bloomed in Kumejima. Deep sea water businesses such as aquaculture, cosmetics, Salt and mineral water created 150 jobs and 1.5 billion yen. Um, this amounts to 18 million US dollars in annual economic impact to Kumejima Island. Nelha on Hawaii Island has more than 20 times the capacity as far as use of deep and surface seawater compared to Kumejima, providing more than 300 jobs and 35 million dollars in annual economic impact to Hawaii Island. Moreover, Neha has an experience in the OTEC experiment. Because of the success of local industry, which can be attributed to deep sea water, and having a potential for OTEC, the participants of the Hawaii Okina Partnership agreed to hold the OTEC workshop. Okay, this workshop took place on November 17th in Kumejima. 29 people from various sectors attended the workshop. Dr. Ikegami from Saga University showed his research in 30 kilowatt OTEC hybrid system and cooperative experiment with the government of India. Mr. Toema from Friends of Nelha introduced Nelha and the future of multiple use OTEC. Dr. Kuba from the state of Hawaii explained the Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative with a report of the OTEC project in progress in Hawaii. Mr. Koman from Hawaii County showed renewable energy facilities on the big island and proposed Nelha as a Kumejima's partner site. From the Okinawa side, the Okinawa Deep Sea Water Research Center was introduced and the Kumejima town demonstrated economic impact and the increasing energy demand caused by the expansion of deep sea water businesses. Council General Green kindly explained the policies on developing OTEC in the United States in his opening remarks. Uh, and from private companies, the latest technologies in OTEC, such as the deployment of pipelines, heat exchangers, platform systems, and process engineering was displayed. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, after the presentation, we had a roundtable discussion, and this is a summary. One of the unique aspects of the OTEC technology is producing a stable power compared with other renewables. Multi-use of deep sea water creates jobs in Hawaii and Okinawa. This is another significance of OTEC technology. OTEC can produce energy and jobs at the same time. Due to the compatibility with the OTEC technologies, 
A megawatt scale or larger OTEC project would be an important catalyst in expanding the deep sea water industries. The one megawatt demonstration project will contribute to the promotion of larger OTEC projects. And to make the next step, feasibility and cost estimates are necessary. Kumejima Town is initiating a feasibility study of one megawatt OTEC and multiple use deep sea water this year. And NELHA is planning to issue request for proposal on the use of pipeline for OTEC purposes. We think Hawaii and Okinawa will be able to share these results to make progress on the one megawatt demonstration project. The next workshop is scheduled for March in Hawaii. Okay, um, this slide shows the expansion of OTEC technologies. OTEC technology is suitable where the temperature difference between surface and deep sea water is high. Therefore, the South Asia Pacific region is a preferable place to expand OTEC technologies. In the future, land-based type and floating type OTEC technology will contribute to the region by producing clean energy and industry. Okay, the last one. And this is the conclusion of my presentation. Uh, Hawaii Okina Clean Energy Corporation will contribute to the energy security and economies of both Hawaii and Okinawa. Four appropriate work programs have been established which pertain to, to the issue in transforming sustainable clean energy economies that Hawaii and Okinawa are addressing. Workshops involving various sectors uh, such as municipalities, private companies, consultants, utilities, and academia have made a lot of progress in sharing common understanding and the mutual goal. Developing demonstration projects from work programs will accelerate the cooperative activities. Best, excuse me, best practices achi achieved through the partnership will be expanded to the benefit of the Asia Pacific region. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. And uh, last one. Uh, last one. And here is an advertisement from Okina Prefecture. Uh, this is important. Next year is uh, time for a reunion in Okinawa. The fifth worldwide Uchinant festival will take place in October. Please come and enjoy. Thank you. I want to thank all the panel members. We're just about back on time. Uh, I think the reason why this panel was here is, as was pointed out by, by Hank Wu and, and Darren Kimura and others, is all of this stuff has to come off the drawing board uh, and out into real life. And we have to make these work and we have to we have to make sure that they can fundamentally alter the way we use oil, the way we use coal, uh, the way we use fossil fuels in general, and still, as I started off saying, have a society that lives a modern lifestyle, um, that has a robust economy, um, and that works for the citizens in it. And what we're doing between Hawaii and Okinawa, we hope, will lead the way to a different day for islands everywhere as well as continents. So thank you very much, and I want to thank the panelists again for their questions.